Hello, welcome to Miked Up. This is this year's first episode, and I'm your host, Chase. And here's my co host. Hi, I'm Ruth. And today we'll be interviewing two people. We have Faith and Mr. Hales. Mr. Hales is the seventh grade um, history teacher, and Faith is actually one of Ruth and I's classmates um, at school. So, yeah. Anyways, um, to start off, um, first question. Okay. What books have changed your life the most? How and why? Um, this is probably a question for Mr. Hales because I do not read many books. <laughs> okay. I've, had, I've had more life to change. The one book I always go back to um, that I read in sixth grade, and it was the first time I actually realized a book could emotionally um, get me. It was Bridge to Terabithia, and I remember we read that as a class, and I remember how emotional it was. I won't give it away, but there is a really dramatic moment in the book, and I never realized a book could make you feel those feelings. I always thought you got that from movies, but Bridge to Terabithia was, was the biggest one that I always go back to. Okay. Um, on the topic of books and movies, what are some types of movies that have also changed your viewpoint on life? Um... Also, another question for Mr. Ailes, because I have no idea. Uh, I thought okay, you were a movie person. Okay, okay. <laughs> we'll give you more time to think about it if you, if, you, if you have one to think. But, I mean, I always, Star Wars is one that I always go back to. Um, there are different movies that give different emotions. The Omen 2 scared me to no end, and for the longest time I was afraid of falling under the ice. Um, Airplane is the movie that I go back to that makes me afraid to eat fish, because they all got sick on the airplane. Uh, but the Star Wars franchise is the one of, of my youth. I had all, the to had all the toys. I still have the toys, you know, safe away in the basement, but that my nieces and nephews play with. But those are when the ones that would be the most seminal. I like any movie that will, will feed the emotions. Okay. Ruth, do you have any uh, questions you'd like to ask? Mm, I have a question for both. <laughs> okay, okay, wait, wait. What does your mental health mean to you? Oh boy, <laughs> um, it's pretty important to me. It's um, it's become a big part of my life. You know, getting better, and you know, I now am turning into something I can help with other people, and um, just you know, put my word out there in my experience. Yep, that was a pretty loaded question after two softball questions of movies and books. You go straight to mental health. <laughs> mental health is, is is very important, and I think anybody has dealt with anxiety or depression or those sort of really deep deep emotions. I certainly have. And my mother worked in the mental health field for the longest time, almost 30 years working at Cambridge Hospital as a nurse in, in the psychiatric unit. So recognizing the importance of it, it's, it's important to, to take care of your mental health because those are the wounds you don't see. You know, someone might have a scar or a broken leg, and we can say, oh, are you okay? But oftentimes we don't know what's going on up in our most important tool, right, is, is, is our mind. So it's important to do the things you love to do as often as you can with the people that you love because I think at the end of the day those give you the best feelings about yourself and about others. Yeah. Man, that was a really deep question. I don't, I don't get how we just jump from books <laughs> and know. franchises to mental health. Sorry, guys. But... um turn on the positive um kind of a funny question but what was your um first impression on each other when you guys first met <laughs> <laughs> would that have been sixth grade sixth grade yeah. sixth grade yeah in miss travers's homeroom she was one of miss travers if she was a sixth grade science teacher at filer one of her one of miss travers's minions who do super secret missions and try to annoy me to no end so it was a very combative relationship and pub and, and it isn't anymore, right? No, for something. But but it was at the beginning. So I do remember having to booby trap her locker one time with gum sticks, so they'd fall all on her when she opened it because of some actions she had done into my classroom. But <laughs> we'll leave these those for others to ask later. But hatred. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Just kidding. Um, yeah, I was on Miss Travers' side, so you know it was pretty pretty competitive, and now he's cool. He's, he has a number one mug that I gave to him. So I call that progress. Yeah. Okay. For Faith, how much did you enjoy Mr. Hales' class last year? I loved it, except for the parts when I actually had to participate. <laughs> um, I did not like the running game where we had to run up to the board. That was pretty scary. 
Um, other than that, you know, he's a pretty funny guy. Makes class interesting. Yeah. Um, actually, Ruth, I have a question for you. <gasps> Me? How did you feel about Mr. Hales' class last year? Honestly, I was kind of scared because, like, I didn't find any of my friends in my same class. So I was like, I don't know if I really want to switch class right now or should I stay in this one just in case, it, like, it turns really fun and stuff. But overall, I really liked my class last year. It was so chaotic. Yeah, I could say the same. Um, there's There were some pretty fun moments, like how um, one of my friends threw this one straw in, like, this... Um, remade Olympics game and it went really far. I don't know. It was really funny though. So I like to look back on that. Anyways, mm. um, another question. Um, what are some hard things that you've been going through this year in school, outside of school, like just in general? For this, for this school year? Mm -hmm. Or for the, okay, for this school year? Um, besides my creaky knees, as I get older, <laughs> my creaky knees is what's bothering me the most. Um, Nothing, nothing too bad. Um, uh, you know, you always have the, the ups and downs of getting to know a new class. But other than that, I think it's been a pretty smooth start. I don't think there's really been anything that, that uh, is overly concerning. Um, but as you get older, man, you miss your knees when <laughs> you miss those young knees. I'm scared to get older now. <laughs> Thank oh, <man>. you. <laughs> um, I'd say something for me is battling my mental health. I've definitely gotten better, but you know, everybody still has their low days. Everybody thinks mental health is a straight line up to getting better, but really it looks more like this. And you know, as far down as you drop, you always can rise back up again, which I think is a pretty cool concept. Very, very awesome. inspirational words from Faith. If Ruth, you all remember oh. your Taoism, the good <laughs> will follow the bad and the bad will follow the good, right? Oh. Right? <laughs> Not the Taoism. Okay, okay, Ruth, uh, is there any questions you'd like to ask? I have a question for Mr. Hales. If you had to teach a different subject, what would you teach Ooh. other than history? Either math or PE. No. I love math because it's great when you see a student, actually, the light turns on and they recognize something like percents and fractions are the same thing, <laughs> just written different ways. But you can see the light bulb go on. Um, and Jim, you can just always do a lot of... A lot of fun stuff in those two classes. Yeah. Yeah. It took me a while to understand fractions and decimals. Oh, and cool. I never really saw you as the math type of person. But PE, I see that because you, you're the baseball coach, right? I do do baseball, yes. Yes. On the topic of baseball, um, why did you choose to be uh, the baseball coach and why? Baseball is my favorite sport. So I first started as volunteering with the other coach just to have fun, be outside in the sun. Um, and I just love everything about baseball. It teaches you a lot about the mental aspect of yourself and others because it's a sport where you're on the spotlight. You're either on the mound or right bat. You can't hide. You can't hide in baseball. So it, a lot of skills translates to life and other sports in baseball. And as a history guy, I love the history of baseball. So I really enjoy that. Honestly, um, you're, you're kind of inspiring me to get more into baseball, honestly. I'm going to be so for real. There's playoffs are going on right now. There's no Red Sox, but you can watch the playoffs. There's no better baseball. Oh. Maybe I will. Baseball. Speaking of sports, Faith, um, I know you do dance. When did you get into dance and why? Um, I started dance when I was in preschool. Um, I'm still with the same um, studio owner, except she did. Um, she went to came to my preschool and she taught dance lessons there. And then I followed her to her studio and I've been dancing ever since. So that's been 11 years now. Pretty mm -hmm. fun. That's crazy. You have any questions to ask Ruth? Um, honestly, no. I don't have anything in mind. Okay, because I do have one because <laughs> um, I know they just closed the door, but before they did, I kept on hearing classical music and that's bringing me to a music related question. Um, What's an instrument you would love to learn to play and why? Is this for Mr. Hales? Both of you. Oh. Piano. I think it's a pretty cool instrument and it's soothing and you get to move your fingers a lot. I guess that's the same with any instrument, but you know. I would love to play the oboe. I would love oboe solos in orchestras. I just love them in, um, a lot of times you can pick out a good oboe solo in a musical or a movie soundtrack. 
So I do like the oboe. I've not had any luck with instruments over my life. Uh, piano was disastrous for me in fourth grade, but other than that, yeah, I would choose the oboe. Mm, that's nice. <laughs> Crazy. Can I just say that was the wrong choice? You should have said alto saxophone. <laughs> if you have learned anything, Mr. Hales. Well, tenor sax would be the one I'd go to, or the or the bass sax if I was Man, really going to the saxophone. You're actually kidding me, right? <laughs> I'm surrounded by saxophones. Man. Yay. Yes, you are. It's a Maybe. flute eat flute world. Maybe it's a sign to switch, Chase. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh I'm gosh. kidding. Okay. Um, for Faith, um, what's a job you'd like to have growing up? And for Mr. Hales, what was a job you were considering before you became a teacher? Um, I think the study of law is pretty cool, especially being like an attorney or something. You get to argue for being right, and you get paid for it. Um, the teaching bug came pretty early because it's, it's in my entire dad's family. Almost everyone is a teacher. So we always love to do that. But, of course, when you're younger, I thought I was going to be a baseball player. And then it came pretty fast as I can't hit, especially when the ball starts moving different directions. So that was that was one. Um, also, you know, always wanted to be a professional athlete in my younger, younger days. But you realize pretty soon whether that's going to happen or not. So teaching came on pretty quick although I, I originally i did a lot of training to be a pe teacher um but then i started changing course as i became a, uh, a bigger reader you asked me earlier about reading i didn't become a big reader until after i graduated high school where i really started reading a lot and once i started reading a lot the history bug is what got big for me okay do you have any questions ruth um yeah i guess okay so since we have two months left in the year which is really crazy um, what were the goals you were hoping to reach this year? Um, jeez, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I really think back. Um, probably become a better dancer and saxophone player, which I think I have achieved both. As Mr. Kozik said to me today, that I sounded quite smooth. Smooth sauce, he said. <laughs> smooth sauce. <laughs> So a smooth answer. Um, <laughs> what goals are accomplished? I do have a a, um, a Christmas gift that I've been trying to finish for like three years, and I might actually get it done in time this year. So I had to keep putting it off because I never get it done for my nieces and nephews. And I'm really hoping that this is the year I can finally do it because I procrastinate all the way through till it's too late to do it, right? So I think I've started early enough that this could happen. And that is my big goal for this year because it'll be something very neat. I'm is, excited for it. Is this gift like super top secret, or are you willing to share? Uh, it's it's not top secret. It's just it's just a it's just a um, a gift of their grandfather, and a story he used to share, and having them be able to hear his voice again, do reading it a, a, a story he used to always tell. So we're trying to put that together in a children's book, with pictures and his audio in that book. So that's that would really be something sweet. that we're looking that's to do. Awesome. Yeah, that's really sweet. Um, another question that I just thought of, if um, if you can think of any old and distant relatives, um, what would you tell them if you had the chance? Like, say, great-grandparents or historical figures that you just might end up being related to? I go to two. I go to my, my grandfather on my dad's side because I never really knew him well because he passed away when I was nine. But the last time I saw him, I was six. And by that time, he had had Alzheimer's. And he wasn't the same person as the stories we've always heard. Um, and he's the one who was like the patriarch of the all of us becoming teachers. He was a longtime principal. Um, and I have his book and a lot of his teachings. And I would really just like to, I would like to get to know him. And same with my mom's dad. So my mom's dad died when he was 11, so I never, ever got to meet him. So those two folks I would love to just be able to get to know because they're a big part of the DNA within our fabric of my family. So getting a chance to talk to those two would be pretty pretty cool. Um, I'd say um, both my grandparents on my mom's side, they both um, passed before I was born, so I never got to meet them. And at Seattle, it's bittersweet. Like, my best friend, Sadie, her grandparents come and visit all the time, and, like, I see them, and they basically basically become my grandparents because I never got to experience um, 
actually having grandparents so it's like you know it's bittersweet but I'd love to get to know my grandparents and same with um, my dad's dad he also passed before I was born but my nana got remarried and to my what I, how I call him papa because he's the only granddad I've ever had um, he also passed but you know it was at least nice to like get to know someone like that yeah Honestly, that's really sweet. Oh my gosh. I'm um, to tear up. But, um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, to turn things on more of a comforting side, what are some hobbies that you've picked up that give you comfort and why? Dude, the only hobbies I have is dance and playing the saxophone. Um, other than that, I'm a pretty boring person. I, you know, I'm funny. I'm funny. Yeah, well, yeah. you're not boring. <laughs> um,. But, you know, I love playing the saxophone. It is pretty comforting because I see it as a way to express yourself through music. And same with dance. It's also really comforting because, you know, you walk into the studio having a bad day, but you just leave it at the door and dance your way through all your feelings. And, you know, especially improv in both um, playing my saxophone and dancing, you get to, like, make up as you go and whatever you're feeling at that moment. And it's, like, really soothing and comforting interesting i mean reading is the the most consistent hobby that i have is reading i have different i mean i honestly i like raking leaves i find that very relaxing kind of what faith was just saying something that relaxes you I like raking leaves um but in terms of any kind of new hobbies I, i've been trying to do some more writing i try to write stories that nobody reads but <laughs> i like to do it anyway to try to get some imagination going uh, but in terms of hobbies, I've done models before. I used to like to enjoy models. Um, right now, I've been doing a lot of um, musical research. Like, I like history. So right now, I've been just looking at a lot of old um, rock and roll musicians. I like reading about that. So that's what I'm reading about, just getting their stories. And the stories behind their songs is what I've been doing a lot of reading about. Okay. Roof, do you have any questions? <laughs> okay. Since I heard you say music, I was just thinking about um, what bands are you into? Like, what's who's your favorite band? Yeah, stuff? that's a good question for both. Well, the Maynard band is fantastic, especially that <laughs> yeah. saxophone section yeah. and the flute. I mean, there's some excellent stuff going on if you listen closely to those two. Um, I mean, generally rock is is the most. I always kind of go back to our comfort music. I think we've been talking about mental health. I think a lot of people use music, either playing music or listening to music, as a way to cope with with stresses or anxiety. Um, I like going back to like Pink Floyd or the band or the Beatles or Dire Straits. I tend to go back that, but I do like a really good music soundtrack. Like I can listen to John Williams or Ennio Morricone. Or, or Hans Zimmer, or even go back to some great classical pieces with Beethoven and Mozart, because that just really relaxes me, especially um, Albanini's Adagio with strings. That will really relax you if you're in a certain mood. It will get you just nice and calm in a place. So I will go to that often when I'm feeling those moments of I need to be in a nice, calm place. Yeah, um, your strings and relaxing remind me of my dad, who love spa music so shout out to donald and his spa music um but for me um i've been getting into weezer because it's pretty big at my school um i we want ooh, I look just just like party party party. i love that song <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and also millie vanilli is um a big one right now though mr morello the pe teacher at fowler did tell us that they're fakes yeah mm. yes they are <laughs> Actually, um, I kind of want to spill that story for people who don't know. Um, apparently, the gym teacher at our school, we um, we requested to play a Manili Vanilli song. Yeah, it was um, Blame It on the Rain. Yeah, and then he told the story that at one of their concerts, they were like singing, and then the music just starts skipping over, so they couldn't sing anymore. And apparently, they were just lip syncing. So, oh, must have been crazy for their fans. I would have freaked out. I would have never. It's a pretty cool dude behind the music, though. Check him out. I don't know his name, but <laughs> saw a picture of him. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. okay, buddy. Okay. okay. 
Anyways, um, for Mr. Hales, I know you are one of the theater directors back at the middle school. What is the thought process behind picking the musicals that the school does? Hmm. It's a long process. I think the first thing we look at is expected cast and the strength that we know, especially if you're doing a show after we've done a show, and we know what, what people will most likely be coming back. So we know that we can find... Um, characters and music that will fit uh, or possibly either fit them really well or give them a nice challenge which and, and so we try to look at different type of genres with different groups so for instance you're all in eighth grade now so when you were in sixth grade you would have been in Beauty and the Beast and then last year Rock of Ages so those are completely different types um, and the group that just graduated last year had done Fiddler on the Roof which is a much more classical piece so we try to we try to make it different each year to give different experience and different um, exposure to different types of musicals. Um, so I know me will look at um, the casts of the, sh of the shows to see how many roles there are. And oftentimes we have more um, female performers. So you try to look for a cast that will either do, have neutral roles or, or stay there. And the main thing for me is I had to like the music. If I'm going to spend three months on the show, I have to like the music. Um, so... And then with Miss Travers, we go back and forth. We alternate each year who has the final veto on the show. And this is a Miss Travers year, so she'll have the final, final, final say. If, we have, if we're really stuck on something, she will get to have the final say and break the tie. So that, that's kind of the nutshell process. We try to break it down to 10 shows and then break it down from there to five. And then we try to, we try to be in agreement. Like I, I would offer, like last year, I think I offered like five different shows that she just did not want to do. Uh, and that was, and we go vice versa. So we always try to end up on a place where we're both happy. Because if we're happy, then we can present happiness because we like what the show is going to be. And if we really like it, the students generally will, or the performers will generally get into it as well. But I can't, I can't be so sure about that. You will know whether you got into those shows or not, right, Chase? Yeah. <laughs> on fact, I am actually going to be helping out in the play more as Miss Travers or Mr. Hales's assistant. Yeah, you ran as Mrs. Travers' errand girl last year, didn't you? Yeah, just for the weekend of the play, though. But I'm looking to be a bigger role in helping out the whole season. You know, maybe... You, I think you'd make a really good stage director. I'm just going to throw that out there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but yeah, <laughs> cool. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Um, for Mr. Hales, I know... Um, last year um there were a few options that you were gonna do like mean girls and i think greece i'm not sure um are there any um returning um musicals from your top 10 list that you might suggest um for the play this year yes are you gonna spill no Aww. Aww. okay but i have looked at mean girls again but I have looked at Matilda and Sound of Music and Heather's. And what was the fifth one? There was one more. Oh, um, West Side Story Jr. But those are what I've looked at uh, just to see what the feasibility of it is. But that's the early, early, early process. Hopefully we'll have everybody know by the time they get back from Nature's Classroom. That's the goal. Jaw dropped. I literally love all those musicals, brother. <laughs> I think Vaishu would freak out Vaishu about Heather's. Would freak out about Heather. Heather's is actually a really popular musical, and as well as me, um, Mean Girls. So I'm pretty sure if you guys did end up doing those, you guys would have a lot of people wanting to audition. Yeah. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> Wasn't it Mean Girls Day yesterday? When, like, yesterday he asked me what day it was. Hey, what day is it? October, October 3rd. 3rd. Yeah. yeah, and then also they did, like, Wednesdays. We wear pink. Yeah. It's today Wednesday? No, Today's it's Friday. Friday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, oh. Ruth, do you have any questions you'd like to ask? Um, just on a topic out of school. But do you think, are you more of a morning person or a night owl? Or Neither. Like, I <laughs> just love sleep. Um, night owl, yeah, I used to be. But I've been more into, like, getting into my old lady phase, going to bed pretty early <laughs> and waking up not so early. So, kind of neither. I often get in a rut because I hate waking up, but I also hate going to bed. So, I generally would tend to go, I have to get up, 
because I have to go to work, and then I will generally be a night owl. I will stay up very, very late. So I am normally up between 12 and 2 a.m. every day, and then I wake up in the morning. If I get even hours of sleep, four or six hours, I'm pretty good. Me, personally, my sleep schedule, I've been going to bed around really early. I usually used to go to bed around 10, but now I'm going to bed around 8, which is kind of bad because now I'm getting up around 3 or 4. I don't know. I don't know if it's a weird sleeping problem, but I got to fix that. What about you? Oh, I feel like I'm more of like a morning person because like I've been waking up around like 5.30. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we but like have to. But like I also sleep around like 10 and I don't know if that's like enough sleep. No, uh, actually, I don't know. That's like 10, 11, 12, seven. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, it's 7. Oh, okay, yeah, then I guess that's kind of enough. Yeah, that's like one hour over. Miss Bailey would be proud of that math you just showed. I will let her know that you just did really good math a lot, right? I miss Miss Bailey. Okay, um, another question. Um, f- um, on For Faith's version, when you were like younger, younger, what are some memories um, that you remember? And for Mr. Hales, while you were in your youth, what are some memories that you remember? She thinks you're too. She thinks you're too old to remember. What? <laughs> are you now, are you that? <laughs> you guys are so mean. Oh my gosh. Um. Hmm. Let's see. Um. I guess this is not so young, but like fourth grade, so four years ago. Um. I just remember my teacher would just put on shows all year. We did not do anything. And, um, yeah, we just used to watch shows. Um, yeah. Like Sid the Science Kid or something? No, like- not even school-related. It, it was interesting. Yeah. So what can I remember from my youth? Yeah. Not a hook of a lot. I have a really bad memory, very bad memory. Um, I get made fun of in my family for how bad my memory is. So anytime I think I have a right memory, they still challenge me and say I'm wrong, even though sometimes I do think I remember stuff. You're wrong. <laughs> oh. I don't, rem- I don't remember a whole heck of a lot. Uh, memory is tough for me. Reading was always hard for me because I couldn't retain what I was reading. So memory has always been uh, something that made me struggle as a reader when I was younger. But I don't remember a whole lot. But I do remember um, one thing I always like to say, that you always remember how you feel. So I remember feelings of how I felt in situations, how I felt in kindergarten, or how I felt on a certain trip we might have taken. Um, I do remember I do remember some of those, but in terms of any concrete memories, really probably when I was six or seven years old where I can think of some of those those memories, but there's not a whole lot that I go I, get, I can go deep back into the well for. And sometimes it gets obscured when you look at photo albums. Um, that kind of, like, do I actually remember that or do I just remember a photo of that? So I do remember when I was in first grade absolutely freezing my feet off in Berlin. <laughs> And to this day, I always tell people I can't feel my toes because they got frozen off from Berlin in 1982 <laughs> because of the silly shoes my parents made me wear. Puma shoes in the 1980s were, looked like they were made out of cardboard. And it was, as you don't know anything about Berlin winters, they can be very, very cold. So I, that's a memory that, that I go back to often. Okay, Ruth, do you have any questions? Um, no. Okay. Okay, so um, what's your favorite holiday and why? I like Christmas. There's so many traditions that our families have done that now my, I see my brothers and sisters are passed on to their kids. I just love the traditions of the holiday season. I love the winter. So I love when it's cold out. I love the smells. I love the, the lights. Um, and it's, it's something that both not only for festive reasons, but also to just reasons of faith i just enjoy that time of year into the new year it was always kind of a fun one yeah i'd have to agree with mr hales um christmas is pretty fun but really i like any holiday that i get to see my baby cousin reina she's three and she's the cutest thing ever i love her and now i get to see the nutcracker at Maynard high school and it's a great production to, to, to watch if you ever want to watch the nutcracker come watch the nutcracker speaking of the nutcracker i know faith um She's she's a dancer. Of course, she's been in the Nutcracker. So what are some memorable things that you remember every time you perform? Um, my probably most memorable memorable um, performance was last year's Nutcracker. I was the lead role, Clara. That was really fun. Um, it was I was always like nervous to be Clara because I thought like, 
oh my gosh, like I have solos, duos, um, like a whole group dance that I'm going to have to remember and like I'm going to have to do it. I did it in front of a sold out audience, fun fact. Um, but really it was just like having fun up there. I was just performing and doing my own thing. And Mr. Hales actually came and Mr. Kozik, the band teacher at Fowler. So shout out to them and Miss Travers. I had no idea Miss Travers came until like after. So that was a pretty fun surprise. Gang, I was there. You were there? Like for like a little bit though. I like stopped by a little bit. Oh, so. and also Andrew Lovering. I don't know if he's still in there. Uh, he in yeah, the he's there. Andrew, he's wave. There. Hi. Yeah. yeah, hi, Andrew. He came oh, okay. well, along with Sarek, Trish, and I think Lester went. I don't know. And because it was sold out, a lot more people were there too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A lot of it's I should true. totally go see it again this year. You going to go see it, Ruth? Probably. Are you going to go see it? You, you should. should. Yeah, you, you should. should. This year, Ariana Manconi and Olivia J are the lead. They're going to be beautiful. Ariana, oh my Ariana. gosh. You and Ariana are such good dancers. Loki. Okay, um, you have anything to ask? Um, since Nature's Classroom is next month, is it? Yeah. Um, are you guys excited? Mm. Yeah, you both are going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess I'm looking forward to it. I don't know. I don't like nature. Oh. So. Oh. Uh, <laughs> um, but well. the fact of that I'm going to be somewhere, like, in the middle of nowhere with Mr. Hales for a week, it's a little scary, <laughs> but. You won't see a lot of me, so that's okay. Aww. I will say you don't have to worry about being out in nature because they've changed the name to Outdoor Classroom. Huh? Do you yeah. like the outdoors? Oh, yeah. No, okay. <laughs> I love the... Oh, that reminds me of a time. Um, I remember last year, Yumi and one of our friends and her little brother, um, we went to this pond, and we went trudging through mud, and mm. I think our friend lost her shoe. <laughs> yeah. Many shoes have been lost in the mud of nature's classroom. So. Oh, I'm scared. Oh. Chloe, is that true? <laughs> we had to have two full adults, uh, three adults, pull Evan Hogan out of the mud pile because he was stuck so <laughs> bad he would there's pictures of it yeah he was stuck and he was like freaking out because it was just like every time he tried to dig out and and pull his foot out he could not get it out and we had to come down to his two three full adults the nation class teacher and myself and mr banta had to literally try to pull him out of the mud hole it was very dramatic it was the first day too so watch out because in november and october when the leaves are down you don't know where the mud is scary does that help does it help i actually <laughs> no. might be cooked i have like zero zero spatial awareness and um i don't have many shoes that stay on my feet well and i don't want to bring these because i don't want them to get dirty so <laughs> i might just i think i think this might be my end guys oh no i'm doomed once outdoor classroom comes <laughs> i don't like the idea of the all-day hike i don't like walking Ugh. all day hike no Mm-mm. In all honesty, is the all-day hike all day? Or is it like five hours? Five hours Do you remember? is still bad. <laughs> <laughs> See? Oh. And you get to be indoors a lot. So you, you'll be good. You'll be fine. Miles, you remember Tom Denny, right? Like how they did those hikes? <laughs> oh, I, actually, then that's not bad. I actually might live. Boop, boop. Okay, um... <laughs> What are some comfort foods that have brought you joy over your life and why? I like all food. Food is food. It fuels you and, you know, brings comfort no matter what type of food. I actually, I did an assignment in ELA today, made it all about eating. I love food. Fun. Yeah. I'll eat anything. Chocolate and cheese and milk. Like together? This Chocolate, Chocolate and fromage. Milk, all day. Fromage, yes. Fromage. Huh. Yes. Those are the three. I can eat them all day, every day. I, I, like, I've never thought of chocolate and cheese together. Like, I get, like, the strawberry. I don't eat them together. <laughs> <laughs> so how, what I'm feeling, my cheesy bad. or if I'm my feeling bad. chocolatey, that I'll change them around. But okay, I, they don't brother, really go together. My no. bad. <laughs> I never thought of, like. Now that you make me think about it, I've never thought of them, like, actually together. Like, I get the strawberry and cheese craze from, like, Ratatouille, but I've never thought of those together. Yeah. I don't know. You, you got any questions? Um, um, no. 
I can't think of anything. I'm not really good at coming up with questions. I'm sorry. Well, it's like 5.45, and I say we should wrap this up in like five minutes, so I'm going to ask some hard hitters. Some hard hitters? Okay. Yep. Okay. What, who are five people you would bring if you were stuck on a deserted island, and why? Five people? I'd bring my family. So my parents and my two brothers and my sister hate me for it because now we're all on a stranded island together but at <laughs> least we'd all be able to do figure out a solution together um i personally bring what's a really smart guy or girl anyone me. i'm sure. talking about like elon musk oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um i don't think i'm elon Bill musk Nye. just putting that out there I, i'm gonna say elon musk mr hales you're coming with me <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just make your island bigger um so that's two people do i count as a person or do i have to bring five separate people uh you count as a person i guess Ugh. okay so i only have to think of two more people um i'd say milana bulis you've met her she's the one who oh, stole your oh pizza oh yeah yeah I, I, milan? milan mila yeah mila um and my mom. You love, love your mom. I love you my love mom. mom. Shout I out to Laura. I know you're going to watch this later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, what is the spiciest opinion you have? Like a hot take. I'm going to have to think of that. I'll give that to Mr. Hales. Can you define spicy? Like say, oh, um, it's not like, oh, I like pineapple on pizza. It's like... School is actually really needed, and you shouldn't be complaining that you don't need school because you have the internet, you know? Like how people usually complain, oh, we don't need school, we can learn that stuff off the internet. No, you need school. That's my hot take. That's your hot take? My hot take is that you can make peace with mosquitoes if you just entirely fall in love with mosquitoes, and if you love something enough, they will leave you alone. Like So if you just fully bag? love a mosquito... Right, and actually believe it. Don't just say, I love mosquitoes. If you actually believe it, for every being of your body, right? Because love is translation. It can translate to all kinds of things. If you love a mosquito, and a mosquito comes towards you and it lands on you, you just like brush away and say, hey, listen, guy, we have a peace treaty. <laughs> just be good, right? They'll leave you alone. There's this girl in our grade that says, um, if you say it enough, you'll believe and you'll start thinking it. Um, she usually says, I love school. Because her mom says, if you say it enough, it'll become true. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I thought of one. Chase, you're not going to like this. Aiden Gallagher is not all that. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Guys, he's actually like so cool, though. He's an actor. He's a vlogger. He's a songwriter. Okay. Okay, so maybe that's more than I do. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that he's any cooler than me. Okay, yeah, I guess I'm that's Faith true. I'm Faith Bibbo. Sounds so much better than Aiden Gallagher. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Ruth, you cannot be laughing. What? I, I love Faith more than Aiden. Okay. Yeah. I guess that's true. Okay. Anyways, um, him up. another question is, would you rather spend one year in the North Pole or one year in the Sahara Desert? North Pole, so I get to meet Santa Claus <laughs> and all well, of his little elves. I'm going to have to hold you while I say this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ride a reindeer. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Go flying, you know. You're going to drop off the presents or, or yeah. are you going to like steal them for yourself? No, I'll be a good girl. I'll, I'll, um. Are you going to become an elf? I know Ruth has a lot of experience with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I think, yeah, I think Mr. H Hales has been a mall Santa in his past <laughs> years. <laughs> He's definitely been a mall Santa. Yeah. Like one of those Santas that sits in a mall. I and like a mall Santa is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I would do North Pole as well. I am a winter person. I like the snow much more than the desert. And with my complexion, I would burn so fast in a desert. And I'm not so sure that I like camels that much. But I will make sure that I go <laughs> up to the North Pole and I try to reclaim the um, Danter and Prancer and Come and Vixen and Cupid and all of those because I think Rudolph gets too much fanfare. 
You know, Faith. You should have gone to Sahara if you really like cameras. You would have exactly. said the Sahara. That, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say, Faith. I thought you'd choose the Sahara because you love camels. Actually, fun fact: camels can, um, like, their hooves are made to walk on snow and sand. So maybe there's camels in the North Pole, guys. I don't maybe. think so. Uh, I don't think you so. Be a one hump camel or a two hump camel? Two hump. Okay. Two hump is better. Okay. Anyways, um. Two more questions to wrap this up. Um, really, really deep hitter. If you had the world's attention for one minute, what would you say and why? I'd probably talk about the importance of mental health. Because, like I mentioned before, it's a pretty big part of me. I think it is a pretty, pretty big part um, of the world that most, like how Mr. Hales touched on, it's not like a visible wound. Um, yeah. That's really deep. No, that that is big. I always like the quote from Victor Hugo in Les Miserables where it says, to love one another is to see the face of God. And it's actually a line in the musical too. So I do is just say, um, to know each other is to love each other forever. So if we all get shit to know each other and love each other, I think the world it can be a better place. Okay, I just thought of another good question. So I lied, two <laughs> more. Um, if... Um, do you are you guys sure that you both can agree on one solid thing like off the top of your head you both know that you both can agree on something we're both going to the north north pole well like besides that before this interview <laughs> like before you guys like got interviewed and stuff you know like any solid things that you would agree on <laughs> i think that i'm we agree that i'm number one right yay um <laughs> mr hill's on top Mr. Kozik and Miss Travers said it. Two and three? Is that you going in order? No. <laughs> okay, so quick exp explanation. Um, my three favorite teachers are Miss Travers, Mr. Hales, and Mr. Kozik. Though, Mr. Hales and Miss Travers, Mr. Kozik is just neutral. He doesn't care. Um, they think that only one person can be number one. But I describe it as if you were in a race and you both stepped on the line like the same time tie. Like, yeah it's a tie you both are wrong i'm number one for sure no my Ruth, list you can agree right so yeah mm. mr hales <laughs> is competing to be number one although he does have a mug that says you are number one and miss travers and mr kozik do not we have agreed on things in the past because we have almost like we shock ourselves when we agree on things sometimes They're like what kind of I can't remember. It must not have been that important, but exactly. <laughs> we have had moments. We have had moments. I've never fully agreed with anyone. Like there, there have been things that the three of you guys have said that I have not fully agreed with. Um, I don't know. There's just like I, I, I'm not really an agreeable person. I'm gonna be so for real right now. Anyways, last question. Um, did you enjoy your time being mic'd up? Loved it. Been pretty interesting. I actually have never been interviewed before. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> the um, Beacon Santa Telethon, I got interviewed um, when I was dancing. You should watch that on YouTube. Me, when I was like in third grade, I got interviewed. Speaking of Beacon Santa Telethon, um, low key, um, me and Ruth might ask for our own little segment, so you guys should totally watch. Matthew, can we do that? Can we? I can't hear this guy. They have to talk, oh, you have to talk to the host about that. <laughs> oh. Aw. Okay. okay. Well, we will find the host. <laughs> we will find the host. Uh, we'll find Grafton, and we'll hopefully get our own segment. But if we don't, you guys should still watch anyways. Like, high key. Yeah. You heard it here. High key. And high I'm pretty key. sure the three of us are going to, like, at least be on TV at some point. Are you going to do it this year? Why not? Are you Might gonna do well. it this year? Sure, yeah. Okay, this will be my second year doing it, but for these two, it's gonna be their first year. So, Mr. Hills, are you gonna be there? I'm not sure. I never have been there, but I've watched it on TV many, many times. I've gotten outbid many, many times. I feel like I always get outbid on things I'm buying right at the very last second. I need to be better monitor I uh, when I put my bids in. I outbid Sarah Schwind, and she watched me do it. It was really <laughs> funny. Now, did you enjoy your time mic'd up? I did. I always enjoy chit-chatting, although I thought it was going to be a radio show at first. Um, but I guess that this, yeah, this was a good time. 
it was a good time get, getting to talk about some things. I do have a question for all of you, knowing that what's your most excited thing about finishing up your Fowler careers, and what are you most looking for as you graduate to the high school? Like, what are you most looking forward to when you get to the high school? I see you, Andrew. I'm going to become treasurer, whether you <laughs> like it or not. <laughs> I'm um, going to win, okay? I see you. Mm-hmm. I can't have a say on this um, yeah. Um, <laughs> to answer Mr. Hale's question, um, I'd have to say playing with Sarah and Tony again in the band. I miss her dearly. It's not the same without her. But I'm going to be very sad to leave all, well, two of my number ones behind. Mr. Kozik's following us up because he's special. Hopefully you'll have more number ones <laughs> in your future. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Faith have been with Mr. Dios for like three years. Yeah, so oh, we're going to be leaving sad. him. Because yeah, you guys do French. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, what about you? Huh? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> for Mr. Harris's, uh, Mr. Harris's question. I feel like I would agree with Faith. I really miss Sarah. And I do really want to play the sax with her next year. Love you, I Sarah. Hope. We love Sarah. But, yeah, I'll miss everyone. On a serious it. note, um... I'm going to be missing a ton of the teachers, like Mr. DeDios, Mr. Hales, and maybe Mr. Kozik. I don't know if I'm going to do Band or Chapter 74. I'm still debating on that. Or even if I'm going to be in um, MHS next year. My parents have been talking about moving. I don't think it's going to happen, but we, I don't know. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> but hopefully I don't move, and um, I hope high school's going to be as radical as my time here in Fowler. Radical. Fun. Fun word. Rock. <clears throat> this is still rock and roll. But anyways, yeah. thank you for watching um, episode one of Miked Up for this year, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>